Here comes my favorite part. Wake up the gimbal. Wake up, gimbal. Not that way. This way. Exciting. I could listen to that song all day long. <laughs> I think it hurt me because it kept on playing. Ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages. No, ladies and gentlemen, grown-ups of all ages. No, ladies and gentlemen. Children of all ages, as I live and breathe. Oh, is the camera over here this time? There it is. As I live and breathe. My name is Mike Mongo, astronaut teacher, and you are here to get what I have to offer you, which is permission to live, work, and play in space because you are born right before the future. The future is right ahead of you. And I am super excited about that. I am talking with people in the future. It is you. You. That f the future is ahead of you. Now, here's the funny thing. I had mentioned it last week. I am calling you live from the future. Your future is ahead of you. Your future is ahead of me. I might not be around for it because I'm 55 and you're young very young and that's how the future unfolds it's in the future and how it turns out is how you make it which is why it's important for people like me grown-ups like me to give you permission to imagine yourself living working and playing in space because what happened what would happen if you were you right now and no one gave you permission to imagine yourself living working and playing in space you might grow up to become something you didn't want to become you might grow up not knowing that you have permission to imagine yourself living, working, and playing in space, doing whatever space job that you want. But you can't say that now. Not after today. That makes me excited. There's one more light I'm going to put up. I love putting this stuff up. I love showing you how it works. This is a, it's not a mystery. It's, it's technology. And I think technology is, is cool. I think that we can make some really good things with technology. It doesn't mean it's perfect. Human beings aren't perfect. How could, how could, uh, well, in a way we are. In a way you are. But that includes the ability to make mistakes. And that includes the ability to, to not be right all the time. Because if we were right all the time, or if we didn't make mistakes, well, what fun would that be? Some of my most fun times have been some of my best mistakes. Once I accidentally, without thinking about it, put food outside for a hungry orange kitten. Hungry. Not a, not a little tiny kitten, a kind of a teenage kitten. And you know what happens when you put food outside for a cat? They show up again. And then that cat showed up again. And so I made another mistake. I put food out for the cat again. And then one thing led to another. And before you know it, me and that cat are best friends. That was George. George and me had the best times. George is the cat that I would have brought to space with me. He decided to check out. He's probably traveling around the universe in some other form of energy. 
So that was a good mistake. That was a great mistake. Sometimes, sometimes mistakes turn into wonderful things. And for sure, almost always, mistakes turn into important lessons. So don't be afraid of mis- mistakes, especially when you're you. Because being young is the time to make mistakes. Especially the kind of mistakes you, can, you, can, uh, you wouldn't be able to make as a grown-up. Now is the time to do it. Make mistakes. I mean, oh, once upon a time, I swallowed a penny. I think I was two years old. And everybody went crazy. What's going to happen? And they called my doctor, Dr. Welty, I remember. And, uh, I, well, I, they told me the story because I don't remember, remember. And then uh, what happened was that um, came out the other side. Went in this way, came out that way. So that was not a bad mistake. Live and learn. Don't eat pennies. Right? And there's other ways. There's other things, though. What if somebody had never tried to eat... Um, what would be something you wouldn't ordinarily eat, which turned out to be delicious? Chocolate. Chocolate is like some weird bean. It doesn't look, chocolate doesn't come sweet. Chocolate comes bitter. And if you add sugar to it, it is quite good. So chocolate is, is, is one of those happy mistakes. We learn from experience is my point. And that's what the whole thing is about. So don't ever forget that. You're going to be making some mistakes. And that's going to be, a, that's going to be the thing. Because you, get, you, get, you, make, you make the mistakes that you're making that we're talking about right now. And you get what we call experience. And when you have experience, that makes you invaluable. That makes you the kind of person that people want to have on their team. Because you know how to do it wrong. And you know how to do it right. When we learn how to do it wrong, we learn not to do it wrong. Unless we have to learn the lesson again. Uh, like uh, how many times have uh, how, uh, don't run, don't run around the pool. Ouch. That's a hard lesson to learn. Yeah, don't run around the pool. And, uh, and, and a lot of us have. And we hit that concrete. Pow. Bang. So that's, a, and, then we, and then we learn it. Or don't, don't touch things that are too hot. Those are lessons we learn when we're you. If you don't learn them when you're, when, if we don't learn them when we're you, what happens is we learn the hard way when you're me. Because the grownups who don't know those lessons are going to get real trouble. Because a, a, a little person, a young person hitting the ground is a lot softer than a grown full body human being like me. I land hard. Or if I put my big hand on the stove, ugh. Woo! So learn those lessons, my people. Learn them. That's important. You know what today is? Today is my favorite day of the week. It is Fantastic Friday. Pop, pop, pow. How you like me now? Fantastic Friday is a day we get to do fun stuff. It could be fun Fantastic Friday. It could be freaky Fantastic Friday. It could be food, food delicious Fantastic Friday. It is all these different kinds of things. And I said it was going to be a, a doozy of a show the other day. Here's, what I, here's why. Because I knew that there was going to be an announcement made. And, then, and I get to share it with you. Here it is. Get ready. We are going back to the moon. That is the announcement. That's how I knew this was going to be a doozy of a show. The announcement was made that we are going back to the moon. Now, we've been talking about it for a while, but now we have three spacecrafts that are in competition to go back to the moon. So if you're like, let's say you're like eight years old right now. Let's say you're like 10 years old. So by the time you're out of high school, you'll be 18 years old. So that's eight years down the way, 10 years down the way. If you're five years old, that's, that's 13. 13 plus five equals 18. That's a, you, we graduate from high school around 18. So if you are, if you are around 10, little, right around there, eight years into the future. So that would be two, 2028. What kind of world is it going to be in 2028? I can tell you this. It'll be a world where we have, will have gone back to the moon. Okay? So that means that we're going to have people, human beings going back to the moon. Oh, I got so much to tell you about uh, this whole moon adventure. Let me write some things down on the board. I got all kinds of stuff written down. Look, 
one of my one of my favorite spaceship companies, Blue Origin. They're really in the running to go back to the moon, and you probably haven't even heard of them. The spaceship company that is probably going to take us back to the moon, you probably haven't even heard of. They're called Blue Origin. Blue, like the color. And origin means the beginning. Like, you know who's got an origin story? Batman. You know how, how Batman became Batman? His parents were taken down by criminals and it inspired him to become the Batman. You know who else has got an origin story? It's Superman. His planet was blowing up, so his parents put him in a rocket and shot him over to the earth where he gets powers because of the yellow sun. That's his origin story. His origin story. Origin. So blue origin means blue beginning. And it's the beginning of space. So uh, a friend of mine named Jeff Bezos, he is the wealthiest human being in the world, which is really probably not near as fun as it sounds. And because it's just, you know, like there's a lot of responsibility when you have all that kind of money. It, it, it can be a problem. If I had that kind of money, here's what I would do. I would start a spaceship company. And that's what he did. And so one of the things about this next, this next mission to the moon that I think is very interesting is that one of the people that is going to be on that mission is going to be a person who's a woman. The next person who walks on the moon is going to be a person who's a woman. There's going to be a couple people going on. There's going to be a person who's a woman. There's going to be a person who's a guy. There's going to be, there may be a person who, there's, I think there's going to be three people. And so, but there's definitely going to be one person who's a woman and one person who's a, who's a guy, a man. And so the next person, there's never been a person who's a woman who's walked on the moon before. Never yet. And this is going to be, and this is happening in four years. So if you're five right now, you'll be nine when this happens. And if you're 10 right now, you'll be 14. And if you're 12 right now, you'll be 16. Got it? And if you're 20 right now, you'll be 24. And if you're 55 like me, you'll be almost 60 years old. 59. Pa pa pa. Not bad. It's exciting. So the very first, now here's, here's an interesting thing. There's a spaceship launch. Um, th th today's May 1st. There's a space lit spaceship launch this month from another company called, uh, by another very wealthy person. Um, Elon Musk. Elon Musk owns a spaceship company called SpaceX. And his spaceship company, his spaceship is called the Dragon. So the Blue Origin is called the New Glenn. And there's also the, um, what's the lander called? The um, <laughs> Blue Origin. Let's, let, let's, what is that? Oh, it's, it's the Blue Moon. Blue Origin, Blue Moon. That's what the, uh, the lander's called. The blue moon. So they, these are the spaceship companies. And you may not have even heard of these spaceship companies. Isn't that crazy? Think about that. We have all these big spaceship companies now, and you may not even heard them. And that means the grown-ups aren't talking about them. And that's where you get to check the grown-ups. You're like, how come we're not talking about Blue Origin? How come we're not talking about SpaceX? Though I've heard people talk about that. How come we're not talking about United Launch Alliance? My favorite. Oh, I got so much stuff. Okay, so listen. Fantastic Friday, we are going back to the moon. Fantastic Friday, we are going back to the moon. Fantastic Friday, we're going back to the moon. Holy moly, come on, at some point in, the in time, maybe, in, maybe soon, we're gonna send kids to space and we're gonna send kids to the moon. There's gonna be kids to the moon. Some kids are gonna get to go to the moon. It's not gonna be just kids who win some golden ticket. It's not gonna be some kids who are just super rich. It's gonna be kids who did the work. It's gonna be kids who are great team players. Is that you? Are you a great team player? My people, are you listening to me? Can you hear me now? It's gonna be people who are great team players. So if you're a great team player, and it's okay if you play on, if you play sports, if you if you if you play soccer, if you play if you play esports, if you play Counter Strike, if you play uh, World of Warcraft, if you play all these different games that people play, if you play I don't know what games people play, uh, mine, uh, Minecraft. I, I play that. I love Minecraft. Oh, Fortnite, Fortnite. I'm not a big Fortnite fan, but you know who knows? Maybe it'll turn around in the future. Um, they have cool outfits in Fortnite that do look like people who go to space. So I have to give them that. 
So I, I wrote down all this about Blue Origin today because I want you to know about these space companies. Because for some reason, grown-ups haven't been talking about it. I'm a grown-up. I'm going to take my, my opportunity. I'm going to take my shot, and I'm going to deliver it to you. And here it is. We are going back to space. We are going back to the moon. You are going to go to space. You are going to get to live, work in space. You're going to be one of the next generation of astronauts that we call human heirs. I am going to go to the board. We're going to start writing. Let's kick this fantastic Friday right off. Pow, pow, pow. All right, let me put the robot down. This is Gimbal the robot. Gimbal is very helpful for me. Watch this. Coosh, 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 coosh. Come on, Gimbal. Come on. Get in the game. Get in the game. Get in the game. Thank you. All right. Look. Check it out. So we got a couple things to write down. I got a couple things written down already. This is a good one. This is super important. Next generation of space explorers. That's you. Like I said, I love to write. Love, 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 love writing. I love letters. Here's a great word, human. People love this word. Human. So we don't have manned space missions anymore because people who are women are bored too. So we have crewed space mission. The Blue Origin Blue Moon is gonna be a crewed space mission. So the people who, who are gonna be the next generation of astronauts are called human heirs. That is you, my young friend, watching this show right now from who knows where in the world. Great googly moogly. We're on YouTube. This thing is broadcast live. Po po po. Look, check it out. Human air. Love you. Ba ba bam. What do we got going on here? All right, cool. So, here's the symbol for the human air. You may see it. I draw it all the time. Like I say, I like to draw it. You should be drawn. You should be. You do what you want. If you want to draw, draw. If you don't want to draw, don't draw. However, I have to tell you, once you get good at drawing, you can kind of do anything that you want to do in the world. So I like to draw. I don't know why some grown-ups don't draw. That's not my challenge. These are wings. This is the symbol of the human heirs. And here's a star in the background. I need to get like a highlighter color. Black Star. That was a David Bowie album. He was a famous rock star. He's really cool. He sang a song called Major Tom about going to space. And is there life on Mars? That's a favorite song of SpaceX and Elon Musk. So this is the symbol of the human heirs. Got it? We all in the same game together? You can draw that. Heart with wings and a star. That's your symbol. Use it. Use it. Put it on your shirt. Put it on your hat. Mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, aunt, uncle, somebody. I want to draw the symbol of the human heirs. Heart, wings, star. I give you full permission. Now look, check it out. Blue origin. Let me tell you. Hey, okay, so why does Blue Origin matter to you? That is a great question. Could it possibly be because if you send a postcard to Blue Origin, they will send that postcard to space and I'm gonna show you how to do that today. Can you even believe it? This is gonna be good. Watch this. Okay, so here's the symbol of Blue Origin. It's, the, it's a feather. I drew one for, for you. This, I drew a feather. Look, grown-ups, draw feathers. You can draw feathers. Kids can draw feathers. You can Google Blue Origin and see the feather. They have, a Blue Origin has a website just for kids called Club for Future. It's not exactly for kids because it's not lame. It's actually really great. And so clubforthefuture.org is where you go to get this information about sending this postcard to space that I'm talking about, and I'm not even kidding. You're going to be able to get to send a, a postcard to space. Hold on. Oh my gosh, did I tell you that you're going to get to send a postcard to space? It's true. And, and we're going to do it right here. We're going to practice. I'm going to show you how. Okay? Okie dokie. Okie dokie. Artichokey. Oh, my goodness. There's so much. So, uh, what's his name? Uh, so far, so, so, so much to do. So little time to do it. So little to do. So much time to, time to do it in. All right. So, when we send a postcard to space, we are going to, we, me and you, are going to practice sending a postcard to space. I am going to tell you exactly how to do it today. My friend Jeff Bezos owns a spaceship company called Blue Origin. My friend Michael Edmonds is in charge of this thing called Club for the Future. And he has given me permission to give you permission to send a postcard to space. And I'm going to show you how to do it today. You can't beat that. Holy... S oh, by the way, you know how this whole thing is funded? Hey, kids. If you kids. Hey, students. You. Yes. If you have a grown-up in the room, let him know that you want to buy Mike Mongo a cup of coffee. Or a coffee. Or a coffee. Go to MikeMongo.com and click on buy, me, buy Mike a coffee. 
And that's how this whole thing, how this whole thing works. It's sponsored like that. It works out great. It, it, it's just how it works. So that's, that's, I empower you. I enroll you to do this. You, you, you talk your parents into buying you uh, fantastic toys or anything cool. You know you do. So you can say, hey, mom, have you ever thought about buying Mike Mongo a cup of coffee? And she's going to say, what are you talking about? So that's on you. Okay. He's the guy, mom, dad, person, who showed me how to make a postcard and send it to outer space. That's a good friend to have. Get ready. Here we go. I got some stuff here. Look, I'm going to take it to the floor because I, li I, like I like working down here. We're going to take this show to the floor. Boom. I've been practicing this. Watch this. Okay. So, let's, uh, let's gimbal over here. I can actually flip this around. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. So check this out. This is from my Tim, my friend Tim Gagnon. And Tim does, among other things, he designs patches for spaceship missions. So he made his own card and he sent it to me about the uh, Johnny Appleseed in Space mission patch. Well, guess what? This material is perfect to make a, into a postcard. And the postcards that we send to Blue Origin to go to space have to be a certain size. They have to be four inches by six inches. So, look what I got. A tape measure. So I figured out I could just take this material and recycle the card, which he sent, which is super nice. And he, he kind of made it for me, which I think is even super cool. That's right. Oh, cool. Right? So, like, I find the edge of it right here. Yeah, I'm making my own postcard. Why, why should I have to buy a postcard? Why can't I just recycle some material? I can't make it too heavy because when we send stuff to space, the fact of the matter is this. When we send stuff to space, it weight is expensive to send to space. So it's really cool that Blue Origin even sends our postcards to space. So we make it the right size. All right, I got my marks. Four and six inches. It's four by six. So here's the, and I, look, I made a cutting board. There's just, I'm recycling some cardboard to make a straight line. I go right here, and you can see how the line is straight. Get right there. Oh, wow. There's my four, there's my six inch, that's on six inches this way, it's six inches this way. And then four inches over here. Oh, I should do it by this edge right here. So look, I am making a straight line by comparing this line with this line. See how they're, they're parallel with one another? And they look nice and straight. So now I know my line is straight. I make my mark. There's a great saying, measure once, cut twice. And that means make sure you got your, your lines where you want them before you cut. And you can see I got some scissors, so yeah, we're gonna cut. Boom. So again, let's get our measure, tape measure. Make sure that our measurements are, are good. Put the lid on this. One of my favorite pens. Okay, right to the edge. That's six inches, a little under, so that's perfect. Oh, you can't see. Six inches, got it? And then four inches, four by six. That's the game. That's a little longer than four. I'm gonna bring it down a little bit. Measure twice, cut once. So I'm just gonna bring it a little closer. I don't wanna put extra weight on the spaceship, even if it's only that little bit, because it's really great that they're sending postcard, our postcards to space. And we don't wanna make it more expensive for them or heavier, no matter how much money they have, because maybe it would take away some, all right, so I've measured twice and I'm cutting once. Because maybe, the extra weight of like 10 of these postcards or a hundred of these postcards take away postcards from one other student. And that's, that's not acceptable. We got to think about everybody, ourselves and everybody else too. So I'm taking my time cutting on the line. I've got practice doing this before. I've made cuts. Boom. And then boom. And 
then just like that, I've made a postcard. And look, there's original art on the back from my friend Tim Gagnon. So like that's a that's a pretty cool postcard. It's the right, it's the right, if it was just regular paper, it'd be too thin, I think. So this is the right thickness. If it was this thick, it's gonna be way too thick. That that would that would make a cool postcard, but it's it's too thick to send to space. It's too heavy. It takes up too much room. This is the right, this is the right thing to do. So check this out. Watch this. Alright, so look, let me show you this. Mm-hmm. Let's bounce up here into the future. There's something about the Blue Origin spaceship you need to know. One is that it is the new, the spaceship this is, they're sending it up on is called the New Glenn, and it's named after John Glenn, who went to space. He, he was uh, the first American to go into space in orbit. And um, I think it was in 1962, if I recall correctly, because um, Yuri Gagarin went in 61, yeah. So John Glenn went in 62, Friendship 7 was the spaceship that he went on. And so because he was the first American to go to space, they named uh, New Origin, named their spaceship John, uh, the New Glenn. John Glenn was the first Glenn. Their spaceship was called the New Glenn. And they have a um, ILV. I know that stands for launch vehicle. So it's inter interchangeable, interconnected, interconnected launch vehicle. I think it's inter... It's something like that, ILV. And there's three parts of this rocket that's going to the moon. There's a high orbit to low orbit. There's the low orbit to landing orbit. And then there is the ascent. So when this spaceship goes to the moon, using this three-part ILV, one part is used just to go from high orbit, which is the going around the moon. Like you get to the moon to the Earth, and then you're in orbit. You're going around the moon. That's... And you're not too close because you don't want to be drawn down to it. And so there's a, one part of the rocket ship that brings you from high orbit to low orbit. And there's another part that brings you from low orbit to landing. That's the second part of the spaceship. It's a three-part spaceship. And then there's the ascent, the, land, the lander. There's a three-part lander. And then the ascent. Ascent is to rise. So that's how it gets back up to, the, to go to space to come back to Earth. That's the new Glenn spaceship. And... The reason I tell you all that, because the rocket that is sending the New Glenn spaceship to the moon is called the United Launch Alliance, that's our friends, Vulcan, like Spock. Vulcan spaceship, the United Launch Alliance Vulcan spaceship. And that's this big rocket is a big, 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 powerful rocket. And it's going to go from the um, uh, Space Launch Complex, Spaceship Launch Com Complex 41, which is super famous at Cape Canaveral. And the reason I tell you all this, back to the postcard, is right here. Oh boy, holy smokes, this is awesome. Okay, right here. Look, it's my postcard, it's going to space, so I wanna show you how, how I would do it. Look, I got my bag of uh, United Launch Alliance stuff over here. Ho, 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 ho. Check this out. I have a Vulcan Centaur sticker. This is the rocket ship that's going back to the moon that's, that's gonna be flying the new Glenn. So, what a great thing to put on my postcard, right? Look how awesome this postcard is now. And it's going from Florida, so there's the palm trees. Space Coast, that's where it's launching from. This is the perfect postcard. So, on uh, my perfect postcard, when you do a postcard, it's important to do this. This is important. The address, right? But here's the funny thing. Normally you would put your ad, you, th their address on there, but on in this case, we're gonna put this in, we're gonna put this in a envelope in an envelope, and then look, I'm gonna do it like this. Okay, and then I'm gonna put over here, I should've put the, the line over here. A little, a little, I'm gonna do two lines. And then right here is where I put my address, where you would put your address. I love drawing. I love letters. 
I love sending letters. I love writing letters. Mike Mongo. And I mean, I made a little squish to the side. That happens. I should have planned higher over here. I can do it again. I don't even mind. It's my postcard and I'll address it how I like to. And I put my, my street address right here underneath. I'll write that in later. And then, and then it's art. So I'm going to say hi from dot, 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 Mike Mongo. Okay. So then over here, I would send my message. Check this out. This is really cool. I know. I love this part right here. Now you can, you can draw on this. You can draw it. You can draw on it. You can do art on it if you want. This is what you can send to space if you like. You know where I'm going with this, right? The symbol of the human heirs. Heart. Wings. Star. That's you. Next generation of space explorers. People who live, work, and play in space. Okay. But I, I looked up on the website and I found this super cool thing. Check this out. All right, so um, shift command. Oh. Cool. Right, so this is postcard from space, okay? This is what they want us to do. They want us to write how we think space should be, make a space con constitution. And so there's one thing in here that I read that was really cool. Um, create a constitution to govern a human population living and working and playing in space. So you can write your constitution, brainstorm ideas for values that would help govern people living and working and playing in space with fairness and equity. Equity means that everybody has a piece of it. It's different than equality. Equality means everybody has the same rights and privileges, and that's important. But equity means that it's not just the uh, wealthy people who have stuff and just the poor people who don't. That doesn't make any sense. So we want something for everybody, and that's it. So write a constitution that applies to humans living and working in sp and playing in space. Write your space constitution on your postcard. Come on. So writing a constitution, like uh, even, even a five-year-old person can do this. You can, you can write any, you can come up with how you think space should be. I think, like for instance, I've always thought about having root beer in space. So I think that part of my constitution would be that we should have things like root beer in space. Now that people may think that's frivolous, white. People might think that's frivolous and that's fine. But the fact of the matter is this, if we don't have fun, oh my gosh, I left the closet door open. My wardrobe is open. You can see all my, all my uh, space jackets and all that stuff. So if we, if, we don't, if we don't have fun in space, if we don't do stuff like have root beer in space, then what's the point of going? Like I have a dream about having a, a pool on the moon. Because did you know that if you have a pool on the moon, like if you're on the moon and you're at, like, you know, when you go into a swimming pool and you're at the bottom or at, or you could be at the beach and in some, some water with a little, little, little deepness, not too deep. And then you go to the bottom and then you push yourself up and then you, you launch up out of the water. If you, if you go in the water, in, in the water, in, on, uh, on the moon, if we had a pool of water on the moon, what would happen is that you would push up off the bottom, we, not you, we, because I'm going, if there's a space pool, I'm going to. So if we had a space pool, we would push up off the bottom of the pool and launch ourselves out of the water like a dolphin. True. Space sports is gonna be cool. You can be a space athlete. I would put space athletics in my constitution, for instance. I know everybody gets really serious about constitutions and everything. Please add fun in your constitution. All right, so basically, all right, all oh, right, right, look, here, paka paka. Paka paka. Paka paka. All right, basically, it's like this. Space Constitution. 
I told you, like, I love writing letters. I practice my letters all the time. I highly recommend it. If you're at home, it's quarantine. And I, there's a, in, in our house, there's a word that we call the B word, constitution. And the B word is bored. We don't do the B word at our house. Look, I, I, I ran right up against the line. I got to be, I got to be more careful with my spacing. So space constitution, um, right? To have air, that should be a, a important right if we have a, a right to air. And then a right to exercise. And then a right to... Let's just say enjoy. Oh, is it already Q and I down? Come on, enjoy ourselves along with work. That's pretty cool. I mean, off the top of my head. Okay, and then I'm going to sign it, my cursive signature. Oh, excuse me. And there, there, look, this is my space postcard. I put this in the envelope, and then this goes to the, to the moon. They stamp it, and then they send it back to Earth, and I'll have proof that it went to the moon or space. You know, we're going to go to space first and then we're going to go to the moon. So you can start with getting a postcard that went to space and then you can get another postcard and send it for the one that goes to the moon. Okay? This is how you do it. So now we know how to write our Blue Origin space postcard. And if you're at home for quarantine and you're not writing a Blue Origin, this goes into an envelope. You can, uh, I mean, I'd put a stamp on it. You know I got stamps. You know I got stamps. Put a stamp on it because it's gonna go, it's gonna, um, <laughs> yes. Oh, I'm gonna put a moon stamp on it. Oh, yes, I am. Wow, how cool is that? Okay, so I can I can cover up part of my name. I could put the moon sideways, it's totally okay, right? There, I got a stamp on my postcard, got it? Cool, right? A moon stamp on my postcard that is going to space. Uh, and here's the spaceship that's going to the moon, moon. Moon, moon, moon. And this is for Blue Origin, whose spaceship is going to the moon. So uh, he, he, remember, here's how you do it. You go to, you go to um, buy Mike a coffee at MikeMongo.com and then go to clubforthefuture.org to find out how to get the information to send your postcard to space, okay? And uh, Blue Origin is the one who's sending our, uh, your postcard. You have to be a student to, they, they're only gonna give me, Puck up, puck up. They're only going to give me special permission because I work with students. You know, I mean, like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play. I'm like, hey, you all, I talked to a whole bunch of students and they're sending postcards. You think you could send my postcard too? And I'm sure they're going to say yes because they know everybody involved. However, generally speaking, unless you're an astronaut teacher, chances are you can only send a postcard if you're in kindergarten through 12th grade. Wow. That's you. So... It's Q&A time. I, got, I had all this little science stuff and everything. I'll do it next time. Monday, science. We'll talk about, we'll talk about science. Um, this stuff is a, is a remember Mike stuff. Uh, let's see. Remember Mike. Remember. Come road. Um, if you need a copy of the astronaut instruction manual and you can't find one on Amazon, just uh, eat, go to MikeMago.com and press contact and, and uh, we'll figure it out. Okay? Contact me and I'll send you one. Socks. Remember last week I had the... Uh, the I had the... Uh, the, the uh, Snoopy space socks. Look what I found. It is Woodstock, Snoopy's best friend, space socks. Po po pow. Check it out. I got white powder all over the floor. I spilled some diatomaceous earth. Oh my gosh, this place. <laughs> no joke. Look, but the space socks is really where the action is. is. And when you're grown up, you get to wear, you get to wear, you get to buy your own socks. You get to do whatever you want. It's awesome. So, um, uh, look, I was going to tell you about oxidizing and, and I'll tell you why in a second. 
Jo Jordy and Santi sent me a picture. I got to show you this. This is the best. This is the series best. Let's flip this camera around. Okay, let's see. Paka, paka. Paka. Paka, paka. No. Paka, paka. Ah, here we go. Okay. Now, I know Jordy and Santi's auntie, Angela. Look how awesome that is. Jordy is, is I think he's five and a half, and Santi is two and a half. Now, I used to have this, the one that Santi has, I used to have that helmet and I used to have this spacesuit. I don't fit it anymore, obviously. But this is, this is, uh, th they sent me this. Thank you very much. They are, I believe they're from Los Angeles and uh, they're, they're the coolest kids in the whole world. I mean, parents that, that put kids in spacesuits make kids who grow up to become astronauts. That's just how it works. Jordi and Santi, we salute you. You are the future. And now back, back like the, the reason I'm talking about them right now is because it's Q and A time and I got some really good questions this week. I got questions. Where is that sweet? Oh, here it is right here. Okay. All right. Look, can I sit down while I do this? Is that, is that legit? My son sent me a dream catcher for my door. Pretty cool, right? It's Raphael. He's the best. Okay, listen, here's my question. These are, these are the best. Annabelle, who is eight years old and lives in Sierra Madre, California. I know her dad. I, I, like, uh, like, these are people that, like, they support, I support, the, and uh, their kids are in the space. And I, I think that students that are in the space are the best people in the world. Is that wrong? I just think it's true. Okay, so uh, Annabelle asked, uh, how are satellites working during quarantine? That is a fantastic question. I'll tell you why that's a great question because we have to do, we have to do, oh, there's my snack corner. Boop, 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 boop. It smells like diatomaceous earth, so earth in here. So, uh, cause I spelled that bag. <laughs> so, uh, we, we have to do, people work in space, still have to work. There's the, the quarantine that we're in right now. Like I'm in, this is why we're doing the show. This is why I'm behind this door right now. This is, we're in my own personal spaceship. You're in your own personal spaceship is because uh, quarantine and people who are doing satellites, satellites run on batteries in space, most of them. And, and so, uh, and, uh, and usually solar recharge as a matter of fact. And, and uh, they, they can run on autopilot, but they send all the information to us like GPS this gimbal the thing that i'm using right here all the different stuff that works because of satellites that run the space satellites are in operation because they have really terrific batteries and the people who work in in the industry are, are continuing to work they are practicing social distancing they're not around each other because they have to stay well all right annabelle has another question how many planets are in space huh in space in all of space there's literally a gazillion, which is a not even a number. In our solar system, which is all the planets around our one sun, there's eight plus a bunch of mini planets, dwarf planets like Pluto. There's still planets, they're just dwarf planets. We got a bunch of those. And then plus moons, which are the planetoids. And then, uh, or they're like planetoids, they're planetoids. And then, then there's the other solar systems in our galaxy, which is the, the body, the heavenly body that our solar system is in. There's at, there's at least a billion other solar systems. Uh, no, excuse me, at least a hundred million and maybe as many as a billion. There's at least a hundred million other solar systems. Is it a hundred million? Yes. A hundred million other solar systems or a billion as, as, as high as a billion. And we have a medium sized galaxy. And so how many galaxies are there in the universe? A gazillion. Like there's so many planets, we would never run out of planets because the universe is so bigger. It's bigger than big. It's bigger than we can imagine big. That's super cool. So how many planets are in space? Yes, is the answer. How many planets are in space? Yes. Why do stars only come out at night? Another good question. Stars actually don't only come out at night. Our planet orbits the sun. And so when it does, oh, excuse me, our planet spins, excuse me, our planet spins, it has its own orbit. And so part of the 24 hours a day, about half, half, the earth is not facing the sun and that earth is in the dark. 
when it's in the dark, we can see the stars that are above us. When we when the Earth orbits and then we bring the sun into view again, then the sun is blocking out the stars that are still in the sky. The stars are always out. Sometimes the sun is really bright and we can't see them. Good question. How many people have been to the moon? 12 people have been to the moon. Only 12. 12 people. Wow. So yeah, the next three people that go to the moon or the next how, however many for sure two, uh, a woman and a man, uh, that's going to be the start of that. We need to get some people at the moon. So those are Annabelle questions from Sierra Madre. Thank you, Annabelle. And then uh, Victoria. Um, I know her mom. Um, good friend of mine. Victoria is four and a half. And she lives in Torrance, California. Why is Mars red? I know the answer to this question. Mars is red because the, the uh, soil is filled with iron, iron oxide, which is basically rust. And so at some point, the iron heavy soil of Mars became oxidized, which rusted. So basically, Mars rusted, and that's why it's red. And I'm not even joking. That's actually the case. So there's a process called oxidation. Oh my gosh, I should show you this. All right, I gotta show you this, this is awesome. What is oxidation? I'm glad you asked. Okay, Victoria. So I know you got some other questions, but I gotta show you this. All right, because I, I had thought about this earlier. Like, how do I explain what oxidation is? Oh my gosh, all right. Ah, that was me knocking, up, knocking stuff over. Paca, paca. All right, paca, 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 paca. All right, cool. That's all the debris from making postcards. Look at our cool postcard once again. Look, what? We made that today. Okay, so check this out. Oxidation. Look, this is an old toothbrush. I just got a new toothbrush. And, and, and you know how you get toothbrushes and you use them for a long time because it's convenient? Holy smokes. Maybe we should change that plan. Look what happens. Watch this. So when you, this, is, this is a toothbrush. That's a little surface. And this is hydrogen peroxide, which is um, hydrogen molecules and oxygen molecules. It's, it's actually, it has one more molecule of oxygen than than, um, um, than water, but that one extra ox, that one mo one extra molecule of oxygen makes it poisonous for us. That's why it's in this color. Like, we, we know we're not supposed to drink it. It's it's got a heart on it because we use hydrogen peroxide for stuff like cuts and stuff. And I'm going to show you what oxidizing is. Oxidizing is removing the oxygen. It's transferring an electron of molecule, an electron from the different molecules on here. Okay, so I'm putting some, this should work. We'll see. Oh, it's working. So, it's a chemical reaction. Let's, let's zoom in on that, shall we? You can see it really well. Look at that, see? Look what is happening. It's actually getting warm. I can feel it on my finger. So this was the toothbrush that I was using up until like two weeks ago. And look at, look how the, the uh, hydrogen peroxide is making everything bubble. And it's because, let's see if there's, it works on the other side. It's because it's reacting with the, uh, with the bacteria, with the bacteria that's on there, which is crazy. So iron does the same thing when it is exposed to oxygen. Oxid, oxygen, oh wow, that's really going down. Oxygen has a, um, it oxidizes. It has a catalyst effect and it moves one electron from one thing to another. And that is what makes it bubble up. It's, it's a chemical reaction. And so this is why we should always get a new toothbrush because um, there's all kinds of bacteria growing on toothbrush. You can do this at home. You can take back, you can take hydrogen peroxide and put it on your toothbrush and you can see, you can see, you know, you can get enrolled in a grown, grown up. Be sure like this. Remember, this is, this is, this is a, this is chemical stuff. This is, this is a not bad to, uh, sometimes, sometimes, uh, grown ups use it for all kinds of different things. So if you're going to use it, be sure to have a grown up around. That's my suggestion you know, or be smart, but remember this is poison. Okay, don't don't drink this stuff for gosh sakes. Yeesh. I see I see people do stupid things like that. They go right to the hospital. So uh, you can see it reacting right down here. There's some. Uh, uh, this is a recycled food container, so there's some bubbles happening. 
And that's oxidizing. And that's why the, the that's why Mars is red because that because uh, the the surface was filled with iron and and the uh, and it reacted to oxygen and rusted. So all that red dust that is rust dust on Mars. So that's a, that's a good question. Um, who asked that question? I think that was Victoria. Victoria, thanks for asking that question. She got a couple more. I'm going to wrap it up. Um, oh, why is Neptune blue? Similar, similar. Okay. Oh, a little different. Um, Neptune is made of hydrogen and methane and helium and and uh net uh methane reflects absorbs red and reflects blue so the gas of methane which is on the surface of neptune reflects the blue back to us and that's why meth and that's why neptune seemed blue so there's a good question and jupiter is filled with all kinds of gases that swirl around on jupiter on Jupiter, there is a giant red storm that has been there for hundreds of years. We don't know how long. That is tw that's, it's so big, it's twice. And that's the sound. <laughs> the show is over. The, the, uh, the storm on the surface of Jupiter, the great, red, the great red dot, is twice the size. The planet Jupiter is so big that the storm is twice the size of the planet Earth. Victoria. Wow. And all those gases and everything swirling around, it is deadly poisonous. We don't know what is underneath the gases of Jupiter. We have no idea. That's so exciting. Who knows what's down there? Very exciting. All right, that's it. Um, you know, at this point in the, in the thing, in the, in the thing, in Mike Mongo's Astronaut Adventures, I remind you, hey, if you want to buy a cup of coffee for Mike Mongo, that would be super cool. Go to MikeMongo.com. And then the, the other thing, uh, I'd like to thank all of my, I'd like to th thank Annabelle and Victoria and Jordy and Santi for tuning in and being here and sending in their questions and, and their costumes. And then our closing music. You know how much I like that. You keep up the good work at home, okay? Quarantine is space mission, mission training. You're on space mission training. You'll know that when you get to be a grown-up. That's really what's happening right now. So practice living in quarantine like you're practicing to go to space. Not to run away from Earth, but to go to space and learn how to do all the stuff that makes this place a great place, an even better place to live. This is my favorite planet in the whole solar system. And it might be my favorite planet in the galaxy. But we, we get to take care of it. And the way we take care of it is by going to space and learning all the different science and technology that we get to bring back to Earth to make this place even better than it is now. That's what you get to do, okay? I'm counting on you. Keep up the good work. I'll talk to you soon. Next week. See you Monday. In the words of my people, what do my people say? Pow, pow, pow. <laughs>